Hello, it's a little after 10 o'clock, so I'm a minute late. My apologies. Welcome back. Nice to see you again, is it, Sue? Um, <clears throat> so, it's been a good two weeks. Um, got to see my mom and my sister and her husband and their very enthusiastic dog. Um, and got to go to... The family farm, which isn't really a farm, it's a long, strange story, but the dairy farm that my great-great-grandparents set up is still partially in the family. Um, we don't do any farming. We're all city people trying to figure out how to lose a farm more slowly. Um, and we had a big get-together um, and did a lot of cleaning and repair work that needed to be done, and that was fun. And our progeny is now a grad student in Madison at the University of Wisconsin in Madison in library science. And we got to see them and meet a bunch of their friends, um, proof that they're doing okay. Um, and that's cool. Um, so we had a good time doing that. Oh, this is totally the wrong uh, slide. As I sit here staring at it. Why are we? There we go. That's the right slide. Um, and uh, um, got to sleep in some, eat a lot of good food, had beautiful autumn weather um, on. See, that would have been Friday, no, Saturday, Saturday. Um, our progeny and I uh, walked from their apartment into sort of the center of campus and back. And it was like two and a half miles each way. And it was a beautiful day. There was gorgeous um, autumn leaves and were ducks and there were geese and there were lots of people out it was homecoming weekend so there was a bazillion students and alumni milling about so it was very active and lively and it was really quite fun so I had a good time but we're back and it's gray and it's dreary um i think we're back to something more resembling october weather um and uh unpacking and cleaning and sorting and um, cuddling with the cat who missed us greatly um, for two weeks and back to programming amazing how that happens so uh, thank you all uh, <laughs> oh no you got COVID dude that sucks um, like has it been bad um, or has it been one of the lesser evil versions of the world I hope it's not been terrible um we have managed, our household has through aggressive vaccination and very aggressive mask wearing and social distancing and et cetera, we have managed to avoid it so far. I tested positive once in May. Um, a PCR test came back positive. Home tests, an antigen tests, always said negative. And the next PCR test I did, which was about a week later, um, was negative. So if I had it, I think I had it. Um, when I do think uh, PCR tests are, are um, super accurate. So I think I must have had just a little bit of it. Um, and my immune system was able to keep it under control. And I never had any symptoms. Um, but I had had um, a vaccine, a, a booster a month, month and a half before that. Um, and uh, like I said, we've been super aggressive about masking and things like that. So we have all managed to avoid the dreaded plague, but I don't know too many people that have at this point. Um, have, getting it is, is clearly more common. So, well, that sucks. I'm very sorry that you got COVID and I hope you're not too bad. Um, uh, that I that taste not being able to taste thing, that would be weird. I really like food, and um, if you can't taste and smell, food just doesn't work very well. 
Uh, that would be, I think I would be very sad about that. But, um, you know, we'd survive. But, mm. So hopefully you get better and that you get your taste back because that would, yeah, it doesn't sound like fun at all. So yes, I think I had a much more pleasant two weeks than you did. Um, and I appreciate you being here despite your being under the weather. Um, so we have code to write and, um, if you're, oops, ah, what am I doing? Help, help. Um, if you're new here, <clears throat> we're working on a web app to batch archive, uh, GitHub repositories. Um, I, as a faculty member, I create organizations for classes that end up with like dozens pushing a hundred archives or uh, repositories and archiving them by hand through the web interface is really difficult so uh well it's not difficult it's tedious especially when you've got to do 50 of them um so i want to write a web app that will let me batch archive them we've been using rust and you um the uh a kind of react lookalike um, library, um, Rust library, um, to make a WebAssembly web app. And we've been working on this for a long time. Let's see if this is part 20, then we've been doing that. And we've been doing two episodes of ice repos a week. Um, we've been working on this for at least 10 weeks. Uh, and then in, if we add in the various skips of which there've been a lot, um, we've probably been doing this for three, four months, um, on and off. And it's still not done because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I've never actually written a React app, so I'm clearly kind of flailing around in that space. Um, and of course I was learning Rust, <coughs> still learning Rust. Um, like Azitsu knows Rust way better than I do. Um, but I'm making progress. Um, so learning Rust, I'm learning you um by <coughs> um transitivity or something like that i'm also learning react or at least concepts about react um and i think we're kind of in a place where there's going to need to be some significant rewriting um at the end of the last episode which was now three weeks ago um uh, things didn't work and spent some time looking at that and thinking about it. And I think that I've made some unwise decisions. And then there's one thing I just don't know how to best handle, um, that's related to that bad decision. Um, and advice on the thing well advice on anything is always appreciated but certainly advice on the thing that i don't know how to handle um is greatly appreciated so i think the thing that i have let myself get i think i did a sloppy thing which has complicated the world and i know how to solve part of that complication but I don't know how to handle one piece of it. So let me explain my understanding of the world and where the, the one piece is. And then maybe if there's somebody out there who's, especially if you've got more experience doing single page web development um, than I do, you might have a sense of what best practices are. A little looking around didn't turn anything obvious up, but I think part of the pro it was one of those things where I wasn't entirely sure what to search for. So I don't know that I did a terribly good job on that front. So here's the thing that uh, the bit the 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 thing that's a bit of a mess at the moment. So let's actually go. I think main. Um. Okay, so main, um, sets up a repository paginator and really at the moment, everything is in 
All the state and information is in repository paginator or some global state. And there are uh, at least two or three, I think three, uh, bits of global state floating around. Um, one is the organization that you enter. So if we go to the actual app, so this is a subcomponent uh, a child component and it um, of the home app um, or of the, uh, of the home page. Yes, it's organization entry. So it's a child component of home page. And when you put a organization in and hit submit, that actually gets stored in global storage and then is accessed from the paginator and elsewhere. I think this is a bad choice. And it wasn't the original choice. Originally, this organization got passed in as an argument to the paginator. And I think we need to go back to that because when the organization changes, the paginator needs to reset a bunch of stuff. And right now we're Dealing with that with use effect with depths, which works, but it, well, okay, it works, but it doesn't actually work because it's not resetting everything that needs to be reset. Um, and that we can fix that. I think we could leave it as, as a global state using the Udux U store. Um, but I feel like we're kind of doing the wrong thing. That if we pass organization as a property to the paginator, then the paginator will, if the organization changes, we'll get a new paginator, which will reset all the state related to the organization. And every piece of state in this thing depends on the organization. If the organization changes, all that state should start over again which really makes me think that that paginator ought to depend on the organization instead of accessing it through this global state and depending on things like use effect with depths to fix stuff. Um, so I think that's a thing that needs to be changed. Um, if we go to the paginator, um, there's, so here we get the organization out of the global state. We also get this um, page map, page repo map um, out of global storage. This is a map, um, let's see, go find that definition, um, of page numbers to repos. So a uh, vectors of repos. So for a given page number, it gives us a list of all the repositories on that page. That also depends on the organization. It shouldn't, you know, if you change organization, that has to be completely cleared and we start over again. And that was actually a bug in the code at the end of the last episode is like, oh, I sort of hacked all this global storage stuff. And then I was like flailing around going, oh, I have to reset everything. If, if this became local state to the paginator, then it would automatically get reset when we get a new organization. Because a new organization would get passed in as a property that would make a new paginator uh, and we would reset the state of the paginator. So having this be a global thing I think not great. And ditto for use for this use store of archive state map. Archive state map um, tells us for a given repository ID, we get the whole repository information and its desired archive state. Um, and that would need to be totally reset when we change organization. So I think having that be a global thing just isn't the smart way to do it. Um, either 
we need to be passing data up and down, or we need to be using the U context, which we played with a little bit, and I don't remember why we kind of went away from it um, and used Udux instead, to be honest with you. I don't remember what the issue there was, um, but uh, I feel like maybe it was a, it was a problem of references and lifetimes, but isn't that sort of how you describe almost every problem in Rust? Um, uh, so, but for whatever reason, context, we tried it, it didn't work out. Maybe we come back to that, but it may, the answer may depend on the answer to the question that I'm getting to that I don't really know the answer to. Um, but these, I think, should either be local state and we should pass stuff around or we should use context. Okay. That, I think I all, like, have some understanding of. Now, the thing I'm, I'm confused about is the, how to handle the relationship between the paginator and review and submit. Review and submit, and I can't even demo this at the moment because things are broken so bad. You may have noticed here, this repository, I got like nothing. And I think that's because I was sort of flailing around some at the end of the previous episode and broke everything so that we don't even see stuff. But um, after we've gone through all the pages repositories, so here we'd get a list of the repositories we have check boxes saying, oh, I can, um, I want to archive that, or I don't. And then you go to the next page and go through, and I want to archive, and I don't, uh, blah, blah, blah. And um, when you get to the end, it takes you to a review and submit page that lists all the archives that you had said, all the repositories you'd said you'd wanted to archive, and gives you one last chance to look them over and say, yes, I want to do that. Um, now I saw, this is not, we haven't yet gotten to the, the question. Well, okay, let's do the question and then I'll, I'll come back to the, I saw. So the question I have that I do not know the answer to, I just, I'm, I'm sort of baffled about this, um, is I'm not sure what the, what the structure ought to look like. At the moment, review and submit actually takes you to a review and submit URL. I don't know what's gonna happen if I go here. Uh, yeah, so because there weren't any selected, we, we don't get a list of archives here and this button's terrible, it, that needs to be fixed. But uh, at the moment we go to review and submit and I don't know if that makes sense logically. Like if there is a URL like that, one of the reasons you would do that is so that a user could save that URL and go back there. And that doesn't seem to make much sense. Like coming here cold from I don't know where is going to lead you to this page with nothing on it. Um, because, I mean, if you're lucky, you'll get this page with nothing on it. Because, of course, there won't have been any archive and uh, any repositories that somebody's looked at and passed along. And especially using the global state like this, um, it's just going to look at that global state and say, oh, well, there are no repositories and give you this empty page. Uh, and that, so that it makes me feel like having this URL here doesn't make a lot of sense. But I'm not sure what to do instead. I mean, should, should review and submit just keep you on this page? Um, uh, and we don't want to change the URL? In which case, basically, we've got um, two components. One that is the lit. Oh, whoa! 
What? Hello? Huh. Has S20 stopped working for some reason? But S22 does? Oh? GitHub.com UMC Psi 3601 S20. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of archives here, and they're not uh, repositories here, and they are not archived. Um, so why did I not? So maybe part of what we were seeing this morning was. GitHub behaving weirdly? Hmm. Okay. Um, so if we go to next, load, you gonna work? You know, so um, we'll come back to the local storage. Thanks for the um, uh, suggestion. Uh, Nipa Center Classes. Um, I have no idea if I pronounced that remotely correctly. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm a total noob about Reddit. I mean, I know it exists and I read things on Reddit now and then, but I've never actually used it. I don't even think I have an account. So maybe I should uh, do that. Maybe that should be a thing that I should do um, and that maybe there'd be more folks that would be interested. And apologies about the time zone situation. Um, yeah, that I've got four different um, streaming slots. Um, two are at this time. There's a slot tomorrow night, which from 7 to 9 p.m. my time, um, Central Daylight Time. So... Uh, Tuesday and Saturday, 10 to noon, Wednesday, 7 to 9 p.m., and Saturday, 2 to 4 p.m., um, all Central Daylight Time. Um, so, uh, hopefully some of those other slots work for you, um, and if so, I'd love to see you. Um, so, uh so the going back to the um, local storage suggestion, hmm. Now that's an interesting possibility. Um, and then, so I if I'm understanding your so notice this still hasn't loaded. There's still something amiss um you're suggesting that if we go here we ought to check that there is data like there is a list of repositories and if there's not we would just redirect back to um that which seems reasonable um, yeah, so that would be a possibility. And that at least solves the problem of if somebody comes here and for some reason goes straight to this URL, it would reroute them back. And I still like the... I, I mean, there's a part of me that likes the idea of this URL here because I don't, I'd rather not have this be I wonder if this works. Yeah. So that's so weird. Um, uh, I'd rather not have this view be basically an if like if we're in the this phase, show this component. Otherwise, 
show the review and submit component, which seems like that would be the other way to deal with it, um, is uh, um, well, thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, uh, I'll mention just because it might be relevant. So this stream and the Saturday morning streams are both on this project. The Wednesday evening stream is on evolutionary computation using Rust to build an evolutionary computation system. And the Saturday afternoon stream is using Rust to do some systems programming for a systems lab course that I frequently teach. Um, so they're all Rust, but they're applying Rust in very different domains, which is part of why everything ta is taking forever as I keep sort of changing horses and moving around from one project to another. Um, so um, tomorrow night's evolution computation uh, stream will be returning to a thing called lexicase selection. I figured out over vacation a way to significantly speed that up, I think. Um, and it's, it raises some interesting questions for how to implement that enclosure, which is where most of my evolution computation programming has been for the last decade. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the YouTube, um, thank you. I'm glad that you saw the YouTube. Thank you. Um, if you sort of look at the descriptions of the YouTube videos, it should say like, oh, this is on ICE repos and this is evolutionary computation. So I pr try to provide fairly detailed descriptions on the videos, um, as much for my own records as anything else. Uh, and fingers crossed, um, that's useful to folks. But thank you so much for the advertising. Um, and I will have to get myself on Reddit, apparently, um, uh, and join the modern world. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of social media in general. I, it's, it's, it's not something I personally enjoy a lot. I use Twitter some, but frankly, I mostly ignore it. Um, uh, and I have a Facebook account I haven't looked at in probably years. Um, and so I, um, have not tended to get into new things. And I know Reddit is not new anymore, but, um, when it sort of first hit my radar many years ago, I was like, oh, I don't know that I care. And then I've never dealt with it. So I'll have to do that. But thank you very much. I do really appreciate it. Um, so, <clears throat> so we could... Um, uh, <clears throat> we could keep the other URL, go to it, <clears throat> um, do I zero to prod book? I don't know that I understand the question, to be honest with you. Um, so, um, <clears throat> do I zero to prod book about Rust? I, it's the zero to prod book part. I mean, I feel like is there a word that got swapped somewhere? Um, oh, zero to production book. I bet that's what that is. Wah, wah, wah. Zero to production rust book. Look at that. Okay. Um, you know, actually, I saw this book. Um, I saw a reference to this book somewhere. And it looked actually really interesting. Um, and so I made it, no, actually I saw it on vacation. Um, so literally in the last week and a half. Um, 
and I made a note of it to come back and look at it when I got home. Um, so I assume you're recommending it. You think it's good and useful? Because it looked promising. Um, uh, and um, I was tempted. And I actually, being an, an old, old man, I like books. Um, I still find books to be quite useful. Um, uh, and often more coherent than random. Ah, okay, cool. Um, uh, uh, so cool. Well, thank you. Um, now that I've sort of run across and maybe that's indirectly how, um, uh, I saw it, um, uh, is, but I will definitely look into that, um, because I do find books to be helpful. Um, I have been um reading i mean the original rust book of course um and that's cool to have a interactive book writing experience um uh, that's nifty um and i have thought about like uh, my goal is to actually start sometime having um uh uh writing up some um, some things that I'm learning here as a blog. I'm going to grab that. Um, doop, doop, doop. Cool. Um, and, um, and if there's enough coherent material there, I mean, maybe it becomes something more than just a blog, but it's not even a blog yet. So baby steps. Um, but I, I've learned a lot and stumbled into a lot of things that I feel like I could say something useful about if I got my act together and did some writing. So, very cool. All of that. Excellent, excellent. <clears throat> okay, so, um, so maybe for now we keep it as a... Um, uh, as a separate URL and we, um, uh, just go back to, if I go to next, will it load, ever load this? I don't think so. If I go to review and submit and there's nothing there, we just redirect back to the home page. That sounds like a reasonable option. Um, yeah, I sort of like that idea. So, okay. But back to the code. Um, I do think that all of this state is, is broken. Um, I think I have all of this global state and I really don't want all of this global state. I want to be passing state around in a more controlled way because I think that will make sure that things update properly. And right now I've got all this um, use effect with depths business and I've basically done some flailing around here um, and trying to get the logic right for when to redraw what. And I think it's just all making it way too confusing because you've got to make sure that you reset these pieces of global state in certain circumstances. And I think I've made a mess of that. So I think starting now, um, unless somebody's got a better plan. Um, I think that my plan is to finish my tea, apparently. Um, I think my plan is to start to get this global state out of here and um, try to pass things around in a more appropriate manner. Um,
The one thing about that that I'm a little anxious about, and realistically, I'm not actually anxious about it because nothing here is all that big. There isn't that much data anywhere that any of this will probably matter, but um, we will end up passing a pretty big chunk of data from the paginator to the review and submit component. Um, whereas, you know, most of this stuff, we're just passing like the organization name. This is not a big deal. Um, when we move from the paginator to the review and submit component, um, we're going to pass um, this whole archive state map. And I think we may end up cloning the whole thing because that's what happens a lot. I don't know. We'll see when we get there. But that could be kind of nasty. That seems unpleasant to clone that whole thing. Um, but maybe we won't have to do it. I don't know. We're going to see. Um, okay. So let's try to do this in small pieces. It's a little awkward because things don't actually work at the moment, obviously. Um, oh, and I was going to check. Do we actually have a... Um, is there an error here? Did something blow up? Ah, yes. Something did blow up. So when we... Um, Oh, yeah, we didn't find a given key in the state map that should have been there. And this is all because of the state management problem. Um, so there's some sort of bug in the state management. And we're looking for something, and it's not there. And I think the problem is that this is, is an already archived um, uh, repository. Um, and when we try to access it later, uh, it won't be in the archive state map because we don't have previously archived repositories. So that was, yeah, that was a bug we kind of found right at the end of, um, the last session and maybe that's actually the thing to want to fix first because then if we could get something that kind of works it would make refactoring easier um, since I don't have um, any meaningful tests for which I am a terrible person and I grovel before the deities of programming and yeah I've, I've allowed this to get pretty big um, without any kind of testing so the only way to see if anything's working is to run it um so let's see if you're right about that is it sue so um yeah so here archive so i i have a to do about it um and, but it clearly hasn't happened. Um, and uh, so I think, I think maybe we talked about it. Maybe we realized it needed to happen right at the end of the last session, but we didn't actually get there. Um, so let's see if we start by fixing that problem and then we can try to refactor our way out of the chaos that I have painted myself into. Um, okay, so archive state. Um, so, oh, and actually I was gonna mention, I, I keep avoiding the code. An alternative user interface that I, I saw somebody use somewhere else. Um, let's see if I can get back to here.
And I think this, yes, I think this page loads because there are no archived, previously archived repositories in this page. And that um, <clears throat> um, S20 doesn't load because there's an archived repository in the first page, and that's why it dies. So my original plan had been sort of when you got to the review and submit, you'd have a view that's basically this. Um, with all of the repositories and you could sort of check them again. Now another um, tool that I was looking at was doing something quite different, but it, <clears throat> it was similar-ish in the sense that it had a list of things and you were doing something to them. And it asked for confirmation for each of them one at a time. So it said, do you want to archive this? And you had to say yes or no. And then do you want to archive, th or if we followed their model, it would say, do you want to archive this? Yes or no. Do you want to archive this? Yes or no. I don't like that idea because I, I expect the archiving will actually take a little time because it's going to have to loop through and make a request to GitHub and come back and it's, and we could, parallelize that but it's still if you've got you know 50 or 100 of them I mean it's gonna take a second and being able to just hit a big do all this button at the bottom and walk away would be nice having to go through 75 of these and go yep definitely that one after I've just done that other review seems annoying so I, mean, I think I'm inclined to stick with this, but I wanted to mention that other possibility in case anybody had thoughts. Um, okay, so coming back here, archive state. Um, <clears throat> so I think one thing I'm thinking about, I might be inclined to change this to keep rename symbol. and kept in review and then we would add this repository man i just cannot keep those words straight in my head state can't be changed um, already archived boom so <clears throat> then for every archive it was either archived previously we have chosen to keep it in the pagination view we've chosen to archive or we kept it in review. So we got to the review stage and the review stage will only display these repositories. So repositories with this state. Um, and we want to be able to change that, but we need it to be a different state than keep because if it's keep, we don't want to display it. If it's kept in review, we do want to display it. Um, and then this name seems awkward to me. Um, uh, I find myself getting muddled mentally about what that means um, because it isn't I think of archive state as being, well, A, it's really the state of the repository, not the state of an archive. And it's the, it's sort of the desired state. Um, uh, of a repository rather than the state of an archive. I think it's just not a great name. Um, desired repository state. 
Now that's a long name. I don't know that I like that long name. I think it's a better name than what we had, but I don't, I, I'm op very open to the possibility that there are other better names in the world. Um, because uh, I think that it's um, uh, kind of a awkward long name. Um, so now we need to look at what we've got here on the impl for this because I think there are going to need to be some updates um, after that change. <clears throat> So, um, so this is in the paginator, and if the box is checked, so that would be the Boolean is true, then we want to archive that repository, otherwise we want to keep it, and this is in the review state where if the box is checked we still want to archive it but if it's not checked we want to set its state to kept in review so that's not too bad um and now this ma this like makes more sense to me because we're comparing repositories and a desired repository state which seems just to make more sense to me um, and I, it feels like this is the wrong name also, that this really should be a repository state map, not an archive state map. So I'm going to change its name, wah, wah, wah. repository state map. Um, and yay for refactoring tools. I wouldn't even probably think about changing these names if the tools didn't exist. Um, so here we're adding repositories. We've got a slice of repositories and we are adding those to this map. So we're looping over the repositories and if the repo is not archived, Oh, if it's not already been archived. Ah, so here, I think is a mistake because we're only putting the repositories in this state map if um, I wonder if this should be, des but it makes it so long desired repository state map repository desired state map um i'm gonna leave it alone um but we only put it in the map if it's not archived but i think we need it to be in the map regardless um so i think we need map entry Uh, it's repo .id or insert default. Oh, no, come on, that's not a thing for me to type. Um, VS Code super helpful, and then I get excited and start to type things that I don't need to. Repo clone and desired repository state colon colon already archived boom so that is long and somewhat repetitive so I think we'd rather have that be self dot map dot oh stop entry repo.id 
dot or insert. Um, we need a pair repo dot clone and uh, we can just say initial state and then initial state could be an if repo dot archived desired repository state already archived else desired repository state archive boom I think that's prettier and we avoid duplicating all of that logic. Um, I guess we could also have done a match on that. And a match might be more rusty. Let initial state equals match repo dot archived true desired repository state already archived false desired repository state archive I don't know. Do I like that better? Um, so, which one do you think will give me the clippy warning? The the if one or the match one? Um, let me have a look at clippy. Oh yeah, Clippy Clippy thinks if else. Yeah. Um Clippy does actually fuss. Um let's see if I pull this over here. So you seem to be trying to match on a Boolean expression. Help consider using an if else. Um so it does um, yeah, but I turned on the extra lints. You're right. I think if I didn't have the extra lints on, um, cause this is coming from Clippy Pedantic. Um, so if I didn't have Clippy Pedantic on, um, then, uh, this wouldn't come up. Hmm. Which one do I, so the match is Four lines versus five doesn't have this else in the middle. I mean, I do actually like the way it reads, to be honest with you. Um, but I think most programmers are probably more used to just if else. I'm going to... For now, I think I'm just going to pick the old school one. It's nice knowing that the, the match version was an option, but I think I'll just get rid of that for now. Um, and that'll sort that out. Um, one thing I noticed when I was looking at the... Um, Clippy warnings. Clippy is in this file slightly grumpy about um, this 
having the name of the module at the beginning. Um, so this didn't come up before because this was archive state map. Um, but this is now in the repository module. Uh, and so we arguably don't need the word repository um, at the beginning of it. And then that would imply we probably don't need repository in this. We could just say desired state and state map here, and it would make these names shorter, which I actually like that idea. Um, so... I don't remember where this is being used. Because that's basically... Yeah, I don't know where that's being used. That's a little weird. Should maybe figure out where that's being used. But I think that maybe changing these names once again. Yay for refactoring tools. And then change this to just state map. Then we get shorter names. So we have a repository and a desired state for that repository. Um, and it's in the repository module, so we know where it's coming from. Um, then we need to get the desired state. What is this doing? So we're taking a repo ID and we are getting the map out of the state map and we are getting that ID and we are mapping uh, the repository and the archive state uh, and we are seeing does it match archive so this is returning a boolean uh, which is going to be true if the desired state is to archive it and false for everything else. Do I think that is the right answer? It'd be false if we want to keep it. It's false if it's already archived, and it's false if it's kept in review. So yes, we would only want to act on it if it's already been archived. Um, and then updating the current, the desired state. Um, so we got a repo ID and the new desired state. And we've got some web console waffle 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 and then we get the map we get the entry and modify um, oh p for pair p.1 gets the desired archive state okay that seems readable and get repo gets the repository out of something and we assert that it has it and then we go ahead and get it we can do this unwrap because we've asserted that it's there um, and I think this is where we get the panic um, 
Is that true? If we do UMM CSI 3601S20, because this dies right away. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, oh, we've already fixed that problem because we now have this. Oh, that's interesting. Wow, so that one change seemed to have fixed that issue. Notice that we're still displaying previously archived things here. We should not be doing that. So the display and review and submit needs to be updated. But the, um, the basic um, that basic problem has been fixed. Now that I think just died. Did that die? Yeah. So that, if we changed organizations, it did a bad thing because we aren't, uh, uh, ah, oh, stop it. My trackpad is very sticky um, we uh, aren't resetting the global state properly and so bad things happen if we change the organization but we did get um, a significant fix so that's a win um, I'm gonna want to commit here in a second but I just want to go through the rest of um, this stuff to see if there's someplace else where changing the desired state uh, struct might need to be updated. Okay, so we were here, we looked at that, get repos to review. So we're getting the values, filter map. So we got the repository and the desired state. So that's a terrible name. Desired State's a better name for that. I wonder if we've used that name anywhere else. Uh, back up a little bit. Uh, so here... This name isn't great. That really probably should be desired state. So rename symbol, desired state, and we could actually remove archive from this. Rename symbol it's not really the archive state anyway it's the desired repository state and ooh, it didn't catch that that needed to be renamed okay and uh, get repo and this isn't in archive state map. This is now just state map, right? Yeah. And this really should be desired state, desired state. So we want to review anything whose desired state is different from keep. Okay, that seems wrong. Repost review. Because 
that will keep uh, that's going to have everything this desired state is not keep which will include this as well um, so we really don't want that Whoa, where were we yeah here uh, ugh. that's kind of ugly. Um, well, I mean, or desired state not equal to actually, we probably ought to do these this way already archived and desired state keep it's not very pretty could make a function out of it um But I don't see it being used. That logic doesn't appear anywhere else, at least at the moment. So I think I'll leave it alone. But if I see this this logic again, then we'll definitely want to um, make a function out of that. Uh, then get repo IDs to review. So we take the map and we get the IDs. Now, what does that do? Um, who calls that? That's a good question. Oh, this just calls that. And it converts the repositories instead of a iterator over repositories it returns a vector of repository IDs okay and this turn gives us a owned vector of repositories instead of repositories IDs and repost archive map values filter map okay here we go um, so these are re repos we want to archive and so we want the desired state to be archived and that won't have changed that should still be true page repo map okay let's I don't I don't think anything here is gonna matter we're going from page numbers to vector of repository IDs and I think that's all good okay so woof, that was a lot of looking but um, I think uh, having I did save right no I didn't save um, make sure we built um, having better naming, I think, will help. Um, there's probably some places it didn't catch because it obviously didn't catch um, things that were in strings um, with the curly bracket interpolation business. Um, and so we might run into some errors in some other places because of that um, when it did the renaming. Fingers crossed it won't be a problem. Whoa, hey. So we threw an error. Why do we throw an error? Oh, self has seen page, page number. Well, that's not good. Um, and that's coming from right here. Okay. 
Oh, and I think this was a state management problem is that we get, we end up adding a pay. I think we end up downloading uh, the same page multiple times because I don't have the um, state management correct. And I think one of the ways that shows up here is because I have, I say we shouldn't add a page twice because we load the page twice, we end up adding it twice. And so we hit this and go boom. Um, so I think that's a separate problem. I mean, it's an important problem. It's the next problem, but I don't think it's related to the renaming or adding already archived that we put in. Um, and I think if we, I think we'll see the same thing if we go to S22 instead of S20. Yeah. So I think we see that every time because I think we end up loading uh, the same page more than once. So I'm going to commit, uh, where's get crack on? Here we go. Um, I'm going to commit these changes, um, which I think are pretty much just naming changes. Oh, um, that name should be changed. So that's in repository list line 25. Come on. Repository list line 25. So this is now just called state map. And I think we can change that to just state map. And that didn't catch this. So that would have blown up. And that presumably should also just be state map. Oh, it didn't catch that because it's inside this HTML thing. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, can't even see that there's a thing. Okay. Uh, now back to here. So we change archive state map, archive state map, archive state map to state map. Now, I suspect there's going to be similar issues here where I probably got local names that ought to be changed, but maybe not. Yep, right here. Um, so these, so line 192 in paginator. Wada, 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 wada. Yeah, archive state map. So this should probably just be state map. And this should probably be state map dispatch. Rename symbol. And this should just be state map. And this should just be state map. Uh, and this should be archive. This should just be state map dispatch. Right. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Let's 
let's actually rename you. Wada 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 boom. Now I don't know why some of these name changes aren't propagating into some of this stuff. Um, and the page map and page map dispatch, those make sense still. Uh, and desired archive state. Oh, this isn't desired archive state anymore. This should be, oh no, that is desired. No, it's desired repo state. Isn't it? Oh no, there is actually still a desired archive state, which is pairs to use for this callback. Hmm. And it's for the checkbox change, so it has to be, oops, nope, that. It has to be a Boolean, because that's what's coming from the checkbox. I might leave that alone. And this would be state map dispatch. I don't know why that didn't. change yeah the rest of that I think is okay compile that's a great question looks like it compiles okay um, so that, that's all changing names there review and submit and that I think is all good and then this is the stuff that we did. Okay, so let's commit that. Stage all changes. So I think the main thing here is rename. Oh, well, actually, really, it's sort of add um, already archived variant to our uh, desired state. Enum. And if we say repository desired state enum, um, this adds a new already archived variant to the repository desired state formerly archive state enum. Uh, this was necessary to necessary to um, keep proper track of previously archived repositories. Um, in doing this, I changed a bunch of names to new 
uh, let's see, in the hopes of making things more readable and better matching the names and the intent. Um, this included, includes desired no, archive state to desired state. And um, skip to keep and skipped in review to kept in review and archive state map. state map and seemed to me there was at least one other I thought I thought I thought uh, maybe not oh I think I went through two phases to get there, but I think this is actually where we ended up. Okay. Um, currently compiles, but there is definitely the potential for potential for issues as the VS Code renaming tool didn't always catch renamings when they appeared, for example, inside of macro calls. Okay, boom. That's exciting. Now, what time is it? Wow, it's 11.24. Oh, programming is so slow. Or at least I'm very slow at programming. Um, the fact that I spent basically an hour renaming things is very me. I totally do that all the time. Um, I love refactoring, um, but it does get in the way of actually producing working systems. Um, so I think now we have to deal with the state issues. And so I'm gonna start with repository paginator taking in a the organization as a um, property. Because I think that that's really when the organization changes, you want the whole, um, you want a new pagination component and you don't want to have to like reset all the um, state uh, for that. You just want a new one. You're starting over essentially. Um, and so I think that that really ought to be fixed. Um, which in some ways is going back to a place where we were before, but mm, too bad. Um, so I think that's here. So here, organization entry currently modifies this global state. Um, now, I think the goal would be probably to get rid of the global state, but in the meantime, we could just pass in uh, the organization um, here as an argument. Just take it out of that global state. Um, organization um, equals... Uh, 
Uh, now it's going to come in as an option because we might not have one yet, which is reasonable. Oh no, no, we've actually we actually pull that out here. Okay, so we can actually just why did I say that? It was capital O. That should be a little O. Um, so then we could just use organization here. And it's a reference to a string. So I think we have to clone it. Let's actually first get deal with this issue. Um, so the paginator we need bring you over by the paginator because we're going to have to hop back and forth between these so the paginator is going to need to take properties uh, what does that look like props and props now props won't exist so we're going to need to define that. Um, where do I want to put that? God, this is such a long file. I really need to get some of this stuff out of here. Um, probably up here with state. So I think struct props and we need to derive debug and clone and properties. And we're going to need organization, which is going to be a string. And this isn't happy. Oh, we need partial eek. Fine. Okay. Why are you? Oh, uh, it needs to be pub. Pub struct props. And we're going to need to have a pub organization. And now this is where we now are going to have to clone. And I think I'm going to need a star somewhere. Maybe not. Okay. Cool. So we'll pass in the organization. And now down here, we actually want let props or organization equals props boom bop so now the string is a But here we had a name. What was the... Oh, we did have a class here. Organization. Which is probably defined in repository RS. And it's just a wrapper around an option string. Hmm. Do we need that? We're gonna... We don't need the option part. 
because we're only calling we're only creating the component if there is actually an organization name so we don't really need this so passing in just a string seems to be the right thing to do and so this will just change to organization ba -ba. and does anybody else blow up no oh uh, uh this should go away now and now that may cause some other things to blow up yeah um update state oh this is updating the state for something and the state was an organization object instead of a string so we need to go find the state which is up at the top oh no i take that back state for organization what is this what does this do so really that should just be a string a reference to a string actually because we don't need to There's going to be a lot of this. Oh, I guess we don't need to worry about this assert. Why do we need... unwrap I don't think we do anymore and I think we just don't even need this line I think that was a bunch of nonsense about getting out of the whoa blip the world um oh because that's a reference if I make it a actual string then all that screaming will go away well hey Wagafa how are you um, I just saw your note so we are we got about 25 minutes left um, I spent an hour renaming things because renaming is fun um, we're now basically trying to improve the state management um i had um done a lot of global state using udux that turned out to be a bad idea um because if you change from one github organization to another all that state needed to be cleared and reset and it turned out we weren't doing that right and a bunch of stuff wasn't working um and so uh i'm basically now trying to make the dependencies clearer um and so i'm currently doing the first simple one which has turned out to be way more complicated than i expected um not complicated but tedious um uh the um which is having the paginator depend on the organization as a property um it was previously a global using this use store thing and the problem there was if you change the organization it didn't 
give you a new paginator. You still have the old paginator and you had to go into the paginator and reset like a whole bunch of stuff. And that just doesn't make sense. Like every, if you change the organization, you're really starting over again. You should get a new paginator. You should then move forward from that paginator uh, and not have this global organization state. Um, I just don't think that that was a logically great way to do it. So we're getting rid of that at the moment. Um, and um, uh, as a consequence, we're also changing all these references to organization. I'd had actually a, an, a somewhere along the way, I created an organization struct um oh actually I, it's not somewhere along i've created this for that global state and it needed to be an option because we maybe didn't have an organization entered at the beginning and since it was a global state it needed to make sense all the time and um the in the new universe we only let's see we can see that here we only bother creating a repository paginator if we have an organization. Um, and so this is a string now, not one of these option things. And so that is, we've got, we had a lot of code here in the paginator that was tied up with this option business. And we're like, no, no, no. We, if we have created a paginator, we have actually an organization we shouldn't need to be faffing about with um, this uh, option stuff. Um, so this one, what is going on here? Um, so organization is a reference to a string. And so why can't I pass a reference to a string into update state for organization? That blew everything up. But what if we make that a reference to a string, which seems like would be a good thing, it all blows up. And it blows up because uh, it's worried that this lifetime won't outlive this spawn local. That's the problem. Um, now, can we pass, can we clone that before we or let organization equals organization dot clone? Is this one of those things where that reference now lives long enough. Oh, that was cool. Um, oh, so that fixed that problem. So now we can just pass in a uh, a clone here, but now something's bad here. Um, and that's Yes, there is no escaping the clones. Oh, go away. Um, there's presumably like some Star Wars um, piece of fan fiction about escaping clones um, that's relevant here. Um, here, just say, I'm going to close the door. Life is getting noisy in the other room. Um, so here it's grumpy because um oops uh props escapes here so i think i have to clone organization here as well why don't you just be organization yeah
Okay. Now why are you grumpy? Oh, that needs to just be an ampersand, I think. Woohoo! The world compiles again. Um, okay, so we get our organization passed in and here I don't think we need this to be something we depend on anymore because um, if the organization changes we'll get a new paginator because it'll get passed in um i think so i don't think we need that he says um although it does by having it here no we would still have access to it because of the move i think we don't need that ah. Now this goes away. And now I think I still needed this clone, but let's confirm that. Yes. Because that's getting moved in here. Even though it's not an explicit dependency, it gets moved in and referred to, and so it does have to be updated. Um, I mean, it does have to be cloned. Okay, so let's see. Um, is there any place else that cares about organization? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Um, so let's see if this works. Wah, wah, wah. Oops, I'm going to be over here. And I assume by now we have recompiled. Yes. And at least that part of it worked. We did load up correctly. We still have the problem that we're loading twice, um, but I think that's related to some of the other state management. But I do think that that probably will make this less bad. Oh, right, it won't do another thing. because it crashed and that blew up the world. Um, oh no, it did call it. It didn't redraw it. Really? Um, oh, th this is the old state map. That didn't get re... Because we got the global state map stuff. Um, that didn't get redone. Um, so this is why I think it looks like nothing happened. Is uh, we're using the global state. Uh, and so that, I think, is the problem there. Uh, what time is it? Oh, it's quarter till. Wow. Let's fix the organization stuff. Um, no, do I, yeah, I do still need the organization structure for the hot minute. Um, I might be able to get rid of it later, but for now, uh, 
Well, actually, I want to make a note though that I think I do want to get rid of it. Actually, are we going to need to get rid of it? Uh, I'll say may want. Not 100% sure. Get rid of uh, this struct. It's not needed in the paginator anymore. And we may not need it in the organization entry component, but I'm not 100% sure. Boom, bop, beep, boop. So we used to have that, now we get this. Make all these changes. Okay. And then stage everything. Wah, wah, wah. Um, pass organization into paginator as a property. Uh, instead of having the organization as a global, as a piece of global state, using udux, this passes the organization into the paginator as a property. Um, this is Im important because then the paginate, because then we will make a new paginator when there is a new organization, um, when instead of having the same paginator, persist from one organization to the next. Since the state of the paginator is entirely dependent on the organization, it doesn't make sense to, uh, or it, it makes sense to have all that reset when there's a new organization. I can't spell organization. Paginator's a word doesn't know. Okay. Um, And I think that's good. Boom. Okay. So we've got nine minutes left. So I think the thing to do next is in Paginator, we've got all this global state. Uh, where we are? Where we are? Right here. The page repo map. And the state map are both global pieces of global state. And they shouldn't be because they have to be reset whenever we change organizations. Um, the page repo map pretty clearly is internal to the paginator. The state map is a little more complicated because it it's gonna need to be passed to 
the review and submit component. Um, so we're going to end up cloning that map, which sounds kind of gross. Um, uh, but I think we start with the re page repo map because that is entirely local to uh, the paginator. Nobody outside the paginator deals with it. Um, I think if we, uh, let's see, find page repo map. If we look for references, I think there won't be any outside of this class except for where it's defined, yeah. So it's defined in repository and has a bunch of impuls in repository, um, which may be, should be not in repository.rs anyway, actually. And yeah, actually they probably don't really belong there. And then we would change this to be state for the paginator instead of um, a global with UDUX. Uh, so actually, I'm going to make, let's go look here. So page repo map, there's not that much there. Uh, who who refers to this? Uh, paginator uses it in a lot of places, but it's all in here. So really, if page repo map moved out into its own file. That would not seem to be a bad idea to me. So I think we're going to do that quick. Um, uh, page repo map.rs. And I think we want page number down to here to all come out of that go there now that's gonna break a whole bunch of stuff because let's see we need we need lib to say pub mod page repo map so that, that becomes available and page repo map that's going to have to be imported we'll have to unimport it later we don't really want it but it's important for the moment and we need to import a whole bunch of things here aren't we um, Repo ID, we're not getting. So we need that. That takes care of that stuff. And then paginator isn't compiling because of. I'm 13. 
Oh, it's not in repository anymore. I wonder if there's going to be a quick fix for that. Nope. If we remove them from here. And then we would say use create repo, page repo map. two guys this isn't being used anymore so let's remove that should have caught that earlier hmm okay oh and this isn't being used let's remove that too wah, wah, wah. Piles and let's see if things run. Oh, it's still compiling. Oh, good grief! Are we are, are we done now? Yes, we're done now. <sighs> This is the known error of trying to get it twice. And that's all good. And if we change to this, that won't have changed anything. Yeah. Okay, so that I think is fine. Uh, uh, so we basically just moved page repo map into its own module and updated everything accordingly move come on capital M page repo map into its own module uh, number and page repo map into a new page repo map module and updates the relevant references. And it is straight at 12 o'clock. I'm going to call that a win. Um, so we clearly need to do, there's more of this to be done on Saturday. Um, I think the important thing uh, is uh, to change uh, this from being a bit of UDuck Global Store to being, um, let me make a note, change this from being global storage, uh, being a UDUX global, to being internal state for the paginator component. Okay. So that I think is the, the priority for Saturday. We get that done and we deal with the state map, which is going to be a little more complicated because we're going to have to pass it around. Um, and I'm not sure the best way to deal with that. That could be a place where context would be relevant. Uh, if problem is for context to work, I think the review and submit component has to be a child of repository paginator. And I'm thinking them more as siblings than children. And if they're siblings, we will have to emit out of one and pass back into the other, which seems mildly gross. 
no, I guess we don't admit. We just pass. Um, because we'll make, we'll use the link, uh, use link tool to handle the linking here and we'll be able to pass the uh, relevant data in as an argument at that point. So I think that could work. But we'll start with the um, the page repo map because we know what we need to do there. And actually, I should make a note probably. Um, change this from being a udocs global to being either internal state for the paginator or use use context tools to share this with the review and submit component. Okay, so this is what we'll come back to on Saturday. Um, reminder that um, uh, I'll apparently be doing Reddit because uh, that seems to be a thing that, that I should do. Um, uh, terrifying to think about, but there we are. Um, I have uh, Discord uh, link. That's an invite link to the Discord. Um, uh, we will be doing evolutionary computation tomorrow. Cannot spell Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m. Actually, this is going to be mostly algorithmic stuff. So there is um, an algorithm called Lexicase Selection. Details aren't important right now. Um, <clears throat> when we added it a couple of weeks ago, it made everything a ton slower. And uh, <clears throat> I've done some reading and some thinking. <clears throat> and I think we can do some things to make it, to speed it up. Um, uh, and so we're going to focus on that. And we might actually poke at some closure code because I think one thing that's interesting is the th what we'll do that'll make it go faster in Rust. I'm not quite sure how to do enclosure, um, which is where uh, most of this stuff has lived in our research group for over a decade now. Um, and so I think maybe there's a real performance issue in the closure side of things that nobody's been aware of. Um, so we may actually have found something useful and make things better for them uh, and myself. And then Saturday, 10 to noon, we'll uh, do more ice repos. So we'll try to like get things better here. And then Saturday, 2 to 4 p.m. This is all Central Daylight Time. We'll be working on uh, systems lab code. Boom. Uh, so that's a thing. And um, uh, thank you all again uh, so much for all the feedback and the suggestions. It is greatly appreciated. Um, and we will see folks, uh, hopefully, to, well, uh, tomorrow night, I realize it's very late for some of you. And if you're sick, really, maybe the thing to do is be sleeping and not watching me program as much as I would like to have your company. Um, you can watch the video later uh, when you're more awake. Um, but uh, if you're in a more reasonable time zone for 7 p.m., I look forward to seeing you there. So uh, thanks a lot, and we will talk to you later. I'm out of here. Goodbye.